What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Blurred Lines. I'm your host, Greg. And I just want to say, you know, I hope everybody's being safe out there. You know, a lot of us are stuck in the house, stay at home orders uh, with everything going on. Um, and who knows how long we'll be in the house. With that being said, there's a lot of content that you can watch right now that you may have not thought about watching. And, you know, I want to do my part and give you some, you know, choices you can make, you know, give you some options. Uh, before we begin, like always, make sure you follow the social medias. Of course, subscribe to this channel, Blurred Lines, on YouTube. Uh, but also, you know, join the Facebook group. It's out there, Blurred Lines. Uh, or Twitter, you know, follow us on Twitter, at Blurred Lines 2020. On Instagram, uh, Blurred Lines 2020. You know, once we get out this <laughs> situation and, you know, events coming up, you know, there's going to be a lot of pictures of Blurred Lines is going to be everywhere, so make sure you follow us on those accounts. And of course, Twitch. Uh, you should see uh, the Blurred Lines Twitch page really be pumping out some content soon with everything going on. And last but not least, we're a community. You guys, you know, are part of this community. So email all questions and topic requests to BlurredLines2020 at gmail.com. Who knows? You may even have a chance to be on the show yourself. So that being said, you know, I was thinking, you know, whether or not I want to do, you know, part one to this, part two, or, you know, I just, you know, make it one video, but I figured, you know, we'll just split it up into parts. So right now, this is just part one. I'm just going through three movies that I recently saw that I thought were great. And with everything going on, I figured you might have the time, you know, sit down and watch it. Uh, the first movie that we're going to talk about is Jojo Rabbit. Now, Jojo Rabbit is written and directed by Taika Waititi. Uh, you may know him uh, from such movies as What We Do in the Shadows and, of course, the very successful Thor Ragnarok. Uh, this movie is kind of a departure from what you normally get from Taika Waititi. Um, that being said, it, it's you know, it's very endearing and very loving. Um, but it's set in Nazi Germany with a boy, with a little boy, 10 year old Jojo, Jojo, who idolizes Hitler. Not the easiest thing to sell, I'll tell you that. But they, he writes the movie and shoots the movie in such a way that it's an innocent, you know, obsession with Hitler. And it's just about a kid who doesn't know any better, but he's put into a situation where he has to really understand where his heart lies. Um, you know, whether it's to follow the ideals of the person that he looks up with or accepting and understanding the world around him. And there's some great characters in this movie. Um, of course, Jojo being one, and even Taika Waititi as Hitler is a very great character. Um, some other characters is Scarlett Johansson, who's amazing as his mother. She doesn't take over the movie, but her presence is so strong, and she brings so much to the story. She's a huge part of the story. And also, Sam Rockwell as the uh, Nazi officer who sort of is in charge of the town and setting up the town for battle but he plays a soldier who's just hardened by battle and hardened and you know understands the realities of what's going on during this time of the war which is at the latter end of World War II uh, another great character I didn't have him up here but it's Jojo's best friend um, the dynamic between those two is the cutest thing you'll ever see in a movie like this um you you kind of you root for them even though you know they're little nazis you root for them but it's an enjoyable movie definitely one that i would recommend uh sticking with the war theme another great movie is 1917 now i'll be honest with you i was a little bit skeptical about this i saw dunkirk it took me three or four times to watch it, and I still just couldn't get into Dunkirk. This wasn't the case with 1917. 
Um, it's about, you know, two soldiers who are tasked with delivering a message across enemy lines to stop a uh, invasion, from, to stop a battle from happening before it happens. And there's not much to the story. There's not much um, in terms of, you know, setting up different things. It's just following two soldiers from point A to point B. Now, one of the biggest things that sold this movie was the talks of continuous shots. Uh, meaning that, you know, they use phantom edits to make it look like it's just one shot from beginning to end of the movie. Um, and honestly, I do think that is one of its biggest selling points. I mean, the truth is, while there's two main characters on screen, there is, there is a third main character, and that's the audience themselves. You are in the battle with these two soldiers. So everything you're they're experiencing, you're experiencing them with them. You are, you know, in the middle of battle with them. What they're seeing, you're seeing for the first time. It's not a situation where you can say, oh, look out, look out. You're with them. You have no idea what's going on. And there are shocking things that, that happens, you know. You see kind of these two characters grow up in just a matter of hours. Um, in terms of characters, really, you just follow these two. Now, there are there are big names. You know, you have Mark Strong. You have Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, you have Colin Firth in the movie. But they do not play big roles. They're in the movie for maybe a scene. But that's not the reason why this movie's happening. They're, they're not the ones who are to carry the movie. It's the two characters, the two soldiers um, that carry the movie from, to their perspective, point A to point B. Next movie is Knives Out. And what I really enjoyed about Knives Out, well, let's talk about Knives Out first. Knives Out, um, written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who made great movies like Looper and Brick, and also made Star Wars The Last Jedi, um, which I like. I saw its problems. But, I mean, compared to Rise of Skywalker, yeah, it is way better. Um, but Knives Out, to me, is is something different. Um, and that's, that's the best thing about it. It's a murder mystery, you know, a classic whodunit, um, where, you know, Family Patriarch, played by Christopher Plummer, um, is, you know, found dead in his, you know, attic. You know, and the cause seems to be suicide. And, you know, the family's getting ready to have the, you know, will read. You know, they're doing memorials for him, but they're called into questioning again by the police. This time, being spirit, with the investigation being spearheaded by a private detective played by um, Daniel, Daniel Craig, you know, James Bond fame. But he's not British, he's from Kentucky. So the whole time he has a Kentucky accent, which could be a little off at times but you follow the character because you kind of want to see where this is going to go and I mean the cast in here is huge you have Jamie Lee Curtis as the daughter of Christopher, Plum Christopher Plummer and Michael Shannon as his son you have Don Johnson as Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, husband uh, Tony Collette as his as uh, Christopher Plummer's daughter-in-law you know the, the cast is huge Huge. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield playing the uh, lead detective, uh, following Benoit Blanc, Daniel Craig's character, into figuring out what really happened. But to and of course you have uh, Anna de Armas, who's the star of the movie, as the maid and the closest confidant to Christopher Plummer's character. But to me, while all these characters, all these actors play their roles magnificently. To me, the person who stole, steals the movie entirely is Chris Evans. And the reason why I say it is, for 10 years, we've seen Chris Evans play Captain America and play this kind of stoic, honest, you know, 
by the book character that is not him in this movie at all he is almost downright awful in this movie and he's the best character I mean you just look at that smirk on his face that's what you get from him you know to me like all the characters are great but to me he's the one who stands out the most and those are just three um, suggestions that I have you know three options you can look at if you've watched them you know you probably feel the same way I do you probably don't but if you have it, I will say give these movies a, sh a chance. You know, you never know. Um, I'll do a part two of this with some more options, some more choices I think are some good movies to take a look at. Uh, if you got any, you know, comment below. With that being said, this is Greg signing off. Thanks again, and you guys stay safe. And like always, wash your hands.